Lamar Jackson silencing his doubters as the Ravens defeat the Houston Texans to advance to their first AFC championship since 2012. And, you know, in that game, you know, Lamar Jackson became the fifth player with two pass TDs, two rush TDs in a playoff game. But when you come across this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you got your post notifications on so you'll know every time Simply Ball drops and drops another hot banger. Well, let's get right off into it. Well, yesterday, Lamar Jackson had a lot of pressure coming to this game. And what he do, he delivered. He delivered in a big time way. Um, Lamar Jackson and the um, Baltimore Ravens, they defeated the Houston Texans 34 to 10 to advance to their first AFC championship game since 2012. Now, Lamar played an excellent game, man. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson, he exercised the ghost of 2019 and silenced the doubters who questioned whether he could win in the playoffs. And, you know, like he stated, there will be another game here next week in the first AFC championship game since January 3rd of 1971 when the old Baltimore Colts beat the Oakland Raiders to advance to Super Bowl V. You know, Lamar played lights out. Um, Jackson will, you know, square off against Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen next week, depending on the outcome of the game between Kansas City and Buffalo. Um, Lamar played lights out, man. Um, he silenced the doubters. Um, but, you know, he got a lot of help from um, his defense. I mean, the defense did not allow a touchdown. They gave up that special teams um, punt return, but that was on the special teams. That wasn't on the defense. And this is why the Ravens, you know, signed Jackson to that five years, $260 million contract in April. You know, Mar um, Lamar Jackson, he accounted for 252 of the Ravens, 352 yards in that game. Had all four touchdowns. He rushed for over 100 yards, two touchdowns, and threw 152 yards and had two touchdowns. But like I said, you know, the game got tight early, you know, when it was 10 to 10 after the um, Steve Sims returned that punt for 67 yards. But it was tied up at halftime. And Lamar said they went into halftime and he was real vocal about some things that, you know, he wanted to say to the team. Uh, basically, um, Lamar was like, man, hey, we got to get it together. Like Lamar said, he's become more of a vocal leader and he's getting things done to get across to his teammates, man. And he has stepped up and Lamar delivered in a big way. Now, let's take a listen to what Lamar Jackson said after the game. Lamar, um, John mentioned you guys were edgy and angry in the locker room. Yeah. Oh, I was. You were. I was. In, in, in that opening drive in the second half, did that allow you to exhale a little bit? What, what were your emotions, I guess, there? I mean, we we had no other choice. Offense as a unit, you know, um, just not putting point where we scored once. First half, drew the ball a couple times first half, but we didn't really have success. And our, <clears throat> our defense was playing lights out, but we not responding, you know. So we just had to dial in uh, halftime, uh, like Coach said, you know, get the ball out quick um, and let the defense play us honest, and that's what he did. Lamar, you, you said when we, when we talked to you on Tuesday, you said that you felt like you were more prepared for this than you ever had been before. Did you feel like that showed up in the adjustments you guys were able to make in the second half? I believe so. Lamar, can you I'm describe least. what you were feeling, what was said at halftime? It would be inappropriate if I said it right here. <laughs> it would, you know. Um, but, yeah, we wasn't we wasn't really doing anything, you know, to, to that defense. They was playing great, um, and that, that offense was playing great as well. But we wasn't doing our job, you know, um, with our unit. And second half, we went to point points on the board, started moving the ball, moving the chains, and start looking like ourselves. Lamar, take us through the, uh, the TD, though, Isaiah. It looked like he was asking for it high in the air. Was that... <laughs> No, nah. I mean, you know, the receivers call for the ball, tight ends call for the ball when they feel like they got um, someone beat. So that's all he was doing. But um, I get, I feel like he was getting crabbed a little from 24. But I just had to place the ball, throw it back shoulder because he was undercut, and then he just made it. He went up, made a great catch. The rest is history. Lamar, I know it's one game at a time, but now that you guys are going to the AFC Championship game, your dream of wanting to hold the Lombardi Trophy is it starting to, you know, feel like it's getting closer at this point. Nah, cause we we got to we got to finish, you know. I Still agree. playoffs, we're not in the dance yet, but 
I'm looking forward to next week, to be honest with you. I'm not even thinking about the uh, Super Bowl until we handle the business. Good response. 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 Say like we was, we was rusty. You know, it was windy. It was cold as heck out there. Yeah, nice. um, but everything played a factor, you know. But the, the thing I'm um, proud about our team is, you know, we came out second half and we did what we were supposed to do. Put points on the board. Well, I'm sorry, how, how much more in control of the game do you kind of feel now versus maybe some of the playoff appearances the past? Are you, are you looking at things and saying, yeah, I have more experience. I'm more ready for this. Uh, definitely. Um, um, I got the keys to the offense, and when I see it, I just try to put my team in the best position I could. Omar, what Omar. happened on the second touchdown run of yours? You went back into the tunnel. Like, <laughs> what, took your, what took you all the way back there, and uh, what was it like coming out? I don't know what took me back there, but um, uh, what happened when I came out? Mo got the camera, you know, me and Ronnie taking pictures. That's what happened when I came out the uh, tunnel. But, um, so you heard what Lamar Jackson had to say, man. He handled that press conference um, in great fashion, man. He answered the questions. He said, you know, he wasn't trying to get ahead of himself one game at a time. But um, Lamar Jackson, like he said, man, um, they came out rusty. And like I said, you know, coming into this week with this game, with um, Lamar setting out the last game, they had the bye week. Um, now the offense got to get back in rhythm. And it took them um, – Took them to halftime. Come out in the third quarter, they started playing lights out. They started playing Ravens football. Um, you got to give it up to Todd Monken, man, the offensive coordinator, man. He made the adjustments at um, at halftime, came out with a better game plan because D'Amico Ryans, Houston Texans, man, that defense, man, they was playing um, lights out football in that first half. Um, they had a spy on um, Lamar Jackson, and that was causing a little pressure. But on the other side of the ball, uh, Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator for the um, Baltimore Ravens, man, he drew up a great game plan. He didn't give C.J. Stroud a chance to set his feet. Um, he had um, the pressure on C.J. Stroud. He was always scrambling, um, throwing off his back foot, throwing on the run. He never had a chance to step up in the pocket. So you got to give your hats off to Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens, man. He called a great game plan. But the offensive coordinator, you got to tip your cap. To Todd Monken, man, um, he drew up a great game plan in that second half, and Lamar Jackson and them went out there and executed. Now, the thing about Lamar Jackson coming into this game all week long, people said the pressure is on Lamar Jackson. Is this going to define his legacy in this one playoff game? Because, you know, Lamar Jackson, since he's been with the Ravens, he's 1-3 in the playoffs. Um, he hasn't had no home victories. Yesterday, he got that in the divisional round. He's off to the AFC Championship game, which will be in Baltimore. So roads go through Baltimore. And like he said, he's not getting ahead of himself. He's not even thinking about the Super Bowl. He said, we have to finish. But Lamar Jackson, what he did yesterday, it goes to show, man, you have to game plan for him, man. He's a, he's a nightmare, man. He can beat you with his feet. And also, he can beat you with his, you know, his passing game. You know, coming into the NFL, a lot of scouts said that Lamar Jackson would not be the NFL prototype quarterback, man. And Lamar Jackson has rewritten that narrative. He said coming in when he was drafted, when he spoke to Deion Sanders the night that he got drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, he's going to be a quarterback. He's going to get the Baltimore Ravens back to a Super Bowl, and he's going to win a Super Bowl. And he's on course. He's on pace to make that dream come true. A lot of people doubted Lamar Jackson as a quarterback, but like I said, he has rewrote that narrative, and he's showing all the doubt, doubters what he's capable of doing, and he's silencing his critics. Yesterday's performance is a great indication of what Lamar Jackson brings to the table for the Baltimore Ravens, and if the Baltimore Ravens keep playing the way that they're playing on the defense, defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball, and like Lamar Jackson said, yesterday, yeah, it was cold, but he's, he's used to them inclement weather conditions, so... At this time, man, the Ravens in that second half, man, they played like they've been playing all season long. They got back in that rhythm. But like I said, hey, I tip my cap to D'Amico Ryan, man. He had the Houston Texans fired up to play that game, man. That defense was playing lights out in the um, first half. But that second half, man, Todd Monken drew up a great game plan. and Baltimore came out and executed it. Um, 
you got to look, man. Um, Lamar Jackson got a few weapons out there, man. Zay Flowers, a young kid out of Boston College, man. He is doing some great things, you know, moving the chains, getting big catches. Rashard Bateman, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. is a difference maker as well. He caught that first ball early in the game, but to me, you know, he didn't get a lot of opportunities the way they was covering him, but, you know, Zay Flowers, it looks like Zay Flowers is the go-to guy. And you got to give it up to Likely. Likely has stepped in for Mark Andrews, man. And he's paying big dividends, man. And kudos to Ronnie Stanley, man. Um, the way he was blocking. Um, Lamar Jackson was following his blocks off of Ronnie Stanley. If you go back and look at the fourth and one, when they went for it and Ronnie Stanley crashed down and that sprung Lamar Jackson out on the quarterback sweep. Um, he got 11 yards on that. Look at the touchdown. Look who was leading the block. Ronnie Stanley was leading the charge, and Lamar Jackson just followed him downfield, and he cut off the block, ran straight into the end zone. So Ronnie Stanley, the big guy up front, man, he's making a way for Lamar Jackson, and Lamar Jackson is staying behind his big guy, and he's and he's getting off these blocks, and he's cutting, and Lamar Jackson is paying dividends with the feet, and he's paying dividends with the legs. Two touchdowns running yesterday. Two touchdowns throwing. The first touchdown to Nelson Aguilar. And then that second touchdown he threw to Likely. Um, he missed Likely earlier because the guy could have got a pick. And Likely was saying, just throw it up. Give me a chance. And that's what Lamar Jackson did. Threw it up in the air. Gave Likely a chance. And Likely scored. But Lamar Jackson, man, he has silenced the doubters, man. And the critics are silent right now. And like I said, all week long leading into that game, it was, can Lamar Jackson deliver? It's a lot of pressure um, riding on Lamar Jackson. Um, this is a legacy game, man. Will this define Lamar's legacy if he takes an L? But Lamar Jackson has advanced to the AFC Championship. And like I said, Baltimore is trending in the right direction, man. And Lamar Jackson just wants to finish. So you guys let me know what y'all think down in the comments section. Um, post your comments. Share the video out. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And this is going to wrap up another episode of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, KSAP. Catch you on the next one. Deuces. Thanks for listening to the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share on all major platforms. Another one.